Today we're going to be installing the Deathloft Manufacturing Contour Rack on my 2021 Ram Power Wagon with Ram Boxes. Let's get going. To save time on this video, I'm just going to be showing you the driver's side. Uh, if there is any differences for the passenger side, which there really isn't, uh, but I will point them out to you. So we're going to start by removing the 10 millimeter screws uh, kind of found throughout the Ram Box here. Two up here. All along the inside of the Ram Box. Two more up here. You'll have some along the inside of the ram box. These two on the hinge. One more here. Then you'll have some 10 millimeter screws down here, here, two here, and two more here, and two down in here. The next step is to disconnect the electrical connection to the lights. This is the connection you're looking for on the passenger side. Essentially what I'm going to do is just use this to push down on the little piece on top and then just pull the connector out. So right here on the driver's side, the connector's a little bit different. We have this red clip here that we'll need to slide back. Once that's slid back, just behind it, there's a little plastic bump. You push that tab, and after that, you can pull the connection right out. Once that connector is disconnected, the next thing to do is to lift the ram box out. Kind of lift up on this metal hook latch here to kind of get it out of place. Sometimes it can be really settled in there. Now, once you kind of free it up on the ends, you can usually grab it from different ends. Piece of cake. The next thing we need to do is remove the tail lights. To do that, there's some T25 screws that will need to be taken out. So then to remove the tail lights, you need to pull it straight back. Once you get the tail light out, there'll be this connector here that you can either just hang the tail light completely out of the way, or if you want to, we can disconnect this connector by popping, popping this red tab out of the way. Once that red tab's undone, what I usually do is just put a little clip tool underneath here to lift up the tab. Sorry, it's hard to see. And then you can just pop it right out. Hopefully you can see the little tab in there that I'm lifting up. So the next step is to remove these corner caps that are found on the ends of the bed on every four corners. It's going to be very difficult for me to show you this just given the workspace, so I've gone ahead and popped the passenger side rear ones off. If you don't want to keep these and don't plan on reusing them, you can just pry on them, pop them off, you might break these clips. Otherwise, what I've been doing, and maybe there's a better way to do this, is I'll just stick a flat head down underneath and a little pry tool around the edges, prying up and I'll push on these clips in each location just to get them to pop up and after that you can uh, release them without breaking these tabs off. The next thing after removing the bed caps is to get the main hoop put in place on the front of the truck. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll just kind of get the bolts, uh, four on this side, four on the other side. We'll get those roughly in place and kind of snug them down and get the bar kind of roughly positioned and we'll fine tune stuff at the end. We're tightening these to 20 foot-pounds. It's very hard to get to this front one. Uh, they basically had to rig some very long extensions and go in from underneath the truck and hold it up there while I had somebody else secure the bolt up top to actually be able to torque it with the torque wrench. It took a little while, but eventually we got it. Once the front hoop is secure, next we're going to put in this side rail. Essentially, we're going to drop some bolts through this back pad, not actually going to tighten anything down. Then we're going to come up front here, take the other side of this bracket to put it on here, using these Allen bolts. 
So we'll be using our carpenter square to go from the top of the base plate up to the bottom of the sidebar and measuring 13 and a quarter inches and then we'll just kind of roughly snug stuff in place. We also want to use blue Loctite on these screws and then once we do get them into position we'll be torquing these down to 8 foot-pounds. So down here you want these gaps on both sides of the bracket to be equal. You don't want it too tighter on one side versus the other. You want about an equal gap on both sides so you're applying an equal amount of force and torque to both sides. So you can see here we've roughed it into 13 and a quarter from the base plate to the bottom of the bar. I haven't quite torqued these down yet. I'm just going to snug them into place so this bar does not move. So now that we got the side bars in place and set at the height, they're just snug down so the bars don't move but not torqued yet. We're going to start placing the crossbars in place. Once we get those in place and positioned, then we'll go back and start torquing down the side bars up front as well as the side bars in the back to the 20 foot pounds, 8 foot pounds up front. Now just like attaching the sidebar to the front hoop, you want to avoid clocking these brackets. Again, you want them equal distance on both sides as you snug them down. What I recommend doing is leaving it pretty loose to begin with, getting all four started. That way you can avoid cross-threading and everything as you're getting the bolts in. And then you can just start snugging it down equally on all sides. In my case, I'm moving on to a next step to install a front runner rack. So I'm not going to be torquing these down because I do need to move these around a little bit to get the rack, uh, brackets in position. Once you have the crossbars where you need them, we're going to go ahead and torque down these rear base plates. Again, just like the front, it's 20 foot-pounds. So once you've torqued these back ones down to 20 foot-pounds, you're basically done. Double check your 20 foot-pounds here as well. Make sure you're at 8 foot-pounds on these sidebars. Check your torque at 5 foot-pounds on these crossbars. And that's it for the contour rack. After that, it's basically doing everything in reverse putting the ram boxes back in, recabling them up. I gotta move on because I'm doing a front runner back rack on mine so I haven't torqued down these crossbars yet because I gotta get everything into position. So I'm gonna move on to that. So now we're gonna be installing the front runner rack onto the Deathloft Manufacturing contour rack using the Deathloft Manufacturing mounts that are still here in the package. What you wanna do is have your front runner tray laying top down onto some kind of blanket to keep scratching it up. What we're going to do is unpackage the mounts. We'll lay them out on the rack to get them kind of in position and then start securing things. So once you got your crossbars laid out, what we're going to start doing is sliding the M8 bolts into the opening on your front runner tray and locking the crossbars into position. So what I did is I laid these mounts in place. I then have just kind of secured it tight enough to keep these bars from moving around. Uh, on the ends, then I've left the ones in the middle with just bolts kind of threaded and ready to go. That way I can make any final adjustments and then tighten everything down when it's up there. For my crossbars, these bolts are left loose. I'm going to have to make some adjustments, but I'm starting roughly about 15 inches from this front hoop to here. I think that'll put me right behind the second slat. And then from the center of this one to the center of the back one is 48 inches. That's going to move it back uh, probably about two slats in and we'll make some fine tuning once we get the rack up here. One thing I noticed I forgot to mention while editing this video was the size of the front runner tray. Uh, mine's 62 inches wide by 77 inches long. So where the death off manufacturing mounts go as well as the spacing of the crossbars on the rack will all be relative to the size of your front runner tray. Uh, I'll show some footage at the end that kind of shows you how this tray sits on the truck and what it looks like. We'll attach these to the bottom, we'll get these put in place, we'll make some fine tuning adjustments uh, front to back with both the crossbars. There's also a little slot in these screws here so you have a little bit of an adjustment room for some fine tuning. Once we get these brackets put in here to secure the rack, we can start locking everything down. So to get my left right centering, I just used a square up on one of the brackets, moved it over until it touches the inside of the bar. Then I would measure my gap up top. It's roughly a half inch on both sides for me to center the rack. Once I got it centered, I started snugging down the tray brackets to secure the tray. I also ensured that I still had a little gap up front between the front hoop and the front of the tray. 
So at this point, I'm going to start locking down all the tray bolts, get all those tight, and then I'll come in and secure these crossbar bolts. Again, you want five foot pounds there. Also, just for all your actual tray hardware, you're looking at 10 foot pounds for the torque there. We're going to move on and secure these. Remember, don't clock them. You want an even gap on both sides. And we're going to torque them to uh, five foot pounds. Once you got everything torqued down, there it is. Deathloft Manufacturing Contour Rack. Your RAM with RAM boxes. Using the Deathloft Manufacturing mounts. Secure the front runner tray. Some of the questions people might have is access into this diamondback cover with this tray in place. The cover will touch the top of the tray of course, uh, but you still do have access here. I store less critical items, those narrow longer items, folding chairs, folding tables, things like that. So you still have plenty of access to the back of the bed for things like those. You'll also touch in the back as well on this back slat, uh, but it's less impact as you do obviously have the full access through the tailgate uh, to reach in and store all your items. 